for three years, no one in baseball has hit like Larry Walker. Back-to-back -back batting titles and an MVP say it all. This year, Vladimir Guerrero has jumped out of the gate with numbers that would make the splendid splinter proud. Tonight, Kevin Jarvis has his focus and attention on Guerrero and the Expos. Don't look down. Baseball's next. the Rockies Express. We're heading to Lodo and a Coors Field. Tonight, a gorgeous night. Clear skies, the wind has died, and the Rockies entertain the Expos in the first of three. And of course, the Rockies playing Montreal. You always think of Larry Walker, native Canadian. He once played for these Montreal Expos. How will he play against them tonight? Hi again, everyone. I'm Dave Armstrong, along with George Frazier. And, George, it's sort of a halfway mark now for Larry Walker. Tonight will mark the uh, same amount of games for the Rockies as he played for the Expos. The numbers reflect a little different, though, Dave. 647 ball games for Walker against both of these ball clubs. And with Larry, he's performed very well, obviously, in Montreal. Hit a lot of home runs. You'll get a look at one here in a uniform out of the ballpark. And then here against the Mets just a couple of days ago, another home run for Walker. But the numbers, you look at the numbers, you match them up. 281 average, 99 home runs, 344, 164. To say that he likes playing in Colorado, I mean, the guy likes it mainly because I think the reason the average rose is because of the size of the gaps. They're huge here in his ballpark. No question about it. And he has a seven-game hitting streak right now, hitting 360. Larry Walker. How will the pitchers do tonight after a weekend when the ball was flying? Jarvis and Hermanson go head-to-head -head in the first of three with Montreal. On Fox Sportsnet is brought to you by Eagle Hardware and the Rockies. Felipe Alou trying to make it three in a row this year. Here's his lineup brought to you by Eagle Hardware. They've switched the top of the order in Montreal. Orlando Cabrera now leads off, followed by Peter Bergeron, Rondell White. And of course, the hottest hitter of them all, Vladimir Guerrero. Then Lee Stevens, Jose Vidro, Chris Witcher, Michael Barrett, who hit a home run yesterday, and Dustin Hermanson. Kevin Jarvis making his second straight start against the Expos. Now, fastball slider change. He throws strikes. Only one walk in 13 and a third innings, and he is seizing the opportunity. No question about that for Kevin Jarvis. He allowed just one earned run in seven innings against Montreal. Bullpen came in and gave up two more that he was charged with. The defense for the Rockies, Hammonds in left, making just his seventh start in 25 games. Goodwin in center, Walker in right. Cirillo, Perez, Shumpert, and Helton around the infield. Shumpert, of course, replacing Mike Lansing at second. Brent Main is behind the plate. So we're all set to go. The night could not be more delightful. The temperatures in the 50s, very little wind, clear skies, a whole lot different than yesterday. Boy, it really is. Great night for baseball yesterday. It was a chilly, chilly day, and the wind died down. It wasn't so bad at the very end of the ball game. First pitch, foul back and out of play. Orlando Cabrera comes in, hitting 266 with two homers and 14 runs batted in. He wasn't batting leadoff when we were in Montreal. That duty fell to the shoulders of the second place hitter, Peter Bergeron. Down low, one and one. Cabrera coming off a series against the Giants. He had yesterday off. He went one for eight against San Francisco. And the Expos took two of three at Pac Bell Park. Well, I think it'll be interesting. First start for Jarvis here at mile high. Cabrera lifts a fly ball to center field. Good one going back, still going. Looks like he's got a track now, and on the warning track, he makes the grab. Well, when I mean first start, first start at Coors Field here in the high altitude. He has made one start down in Colorado Springs. Took a perfect ball game into the fifth inning. Started a couple of games here when he was with Cincinnati a few years back, but it's been a while. Well, and you come back in. I think if you were sitting in the dugout, you're starting pitcher for the Rockies. The one thing you noticed over the weekend, everything up in the strike zone. If he can keep it down in the strike zone and make that sinker work, still establish strikes, he'll be fine. Now he turns his attention to Peter Bergeron, who lines it to left field. Hammonds, he goes back. He was fooled. He came in a step, and then the ball sailed over his head. And Bergeron will stand at second with a double. Hammonds really frozen by that ball, came in a step, and then it was over. Now, when you make the step in, the ball's hit hard anyway. So what you've got to do and realize here, and I think more Hammonds plays in the outfield, 
he'll realize even when the ball is not hit as hard, it still carries a little bit farther, which allows you not to react. Cincinnati, this was probably a line drive played perfectly, but not at Coors Field. Two steps in and then the ball over the head of Hammonds. Not the kind of mistakes you can have if you're Jarvis out on the mound. Well, back by Rondell White, back in the starting lineup. He had a pinch hit in yesterday's game and wound up with the game-winning RBI on a sack fly. Rondell White hitting 286, a home run, 18 runs batted in. He has a contusion on the left knee, which is to say, a fancy way of saying he's got a bruise. Inside to Rondell White. White was hit by Scott Downs of the Cubs back on the 20th of April, and that knee has been bothering him ever since. You can see he has done well here at Coors Field with five Coors Field home runs. Hits this one the opposite way, foul and out of play. And it's a ball and two strikes. Well, that was the whole key. The 1-1 one -one pitch, a hard, hard fastball in, and he went away with the fastball. And that's pitching within the strike zone, pitching with a purpose. You can throw in, but you've got to be able to locate after you throw in. It defeats its total purpose. Just missed inside. Just missed. Two balls, two strikes. Home plate umpire is Mike Winters. Fielding Colbert is umpiring at first. Bill Welke at second, and Bruce Freming is down to third. Good hard sinkers in. Two in a row like that. You get him looking away, Dave, and looking for the breaking ball, something off speed. Jarvis staying hard, hard in. You see there, his stats so far in the year, the earned run average, 473. The opposition hitting above 300. The 2-2 pitch to White in the dirt. Full count now to Rondell. Well, the Expos at 14 and 9. They have won eight of their last 11, including the two game sweep of the Rockies, and are keeping pace with Atlanta. The Braves just won't lose. They've won 13 in a row, which ties a franchise record. The 3 2 pitch has fouled out of play again. The Braves, they're leading the Eastern Division by three. The Expos are just three and a half back. Middle City on a three-city tour for the Expos. They started in San Francisco. They'll head to Milwaukee next. Schumper trying to keep Bergeron close to the bag. A chopper down to Cirillo. That'll freeze Bergeron. Throw to first to get White. That's one thing that impressed me so much about Jarvis in that ball game in Montreal. He got into trouble into the sixth inning. He struck out Vidro, then he struck out Hit. Guerrero then came back and got a ground ball by Stevens. He always seems in only two starts. I understand don't get crazy, but in those two starts when he's had to make a pitch, he made it. Now here's Guerrero. Look at those numbers. 410 batting average, eight homers, 27 ribbies. He's amongst the league leaders in all three categories. Jarvis thought that was strike one, instead called the ball a little bit low. Well, what he's trying to do with that fastball, much like Maddox, run it back over the end of the corner of the plate. For him to be successful, winners need to call that needs to call that pitch a strike. Surprising too, Guerrero didn't swing at it. Swings at this one and breaks his bat. Perez has got it. Throw to first in time. So the mistake by Hammonds and left does not cost the Rockies. Jarvis pitches around that, and the Rockies are coming up. They could close no further. He'll bat second. So let's take a look at that Rockies lineup. Brought to you by Eagle Hardware. Tom Goodwin, Mr. Grand Slam leads off. How about that? First one in his career. He'll be followed by Shumper, then Walker, Cirillo, Helton, Hammonds, Perez, Maine, and Jarvis. On the mound for Montreal, Dustin Hermanson. He's won his last three starts. Well, he's been outstanding. Fastball slider change up. A very good athlete. Does not have a record at Coors Field, but an earned run average of 540. What's alarming to me, a 190 against right-handers. We'll see what he does here tonight. The defense behind him. White, Bergeron, Guerrero in that outfield. Barrett already has seven errors at third. Cabrera, Vidro, Stevens round out the infield. Widger's behind the plate. First pitch to Goodwin. Strike one. Well, with
with Hermison, what you get, Dave, is a guy that's going to be around to play with a pretty good fastball. He can get it up into the mid-90s when he has to, but will be consistently 88 to 92 with a lot of movement. Not afraid to pitch in at all. He'll throw the slider down. But if you look at his numbers on the year, why he is so successful, and you can flip the coin over to Jarvis also. 75% of the time, the leadoff man does not get on base. Now you limit the opposing manager to doing a lot of things. Hopefully I'll jinx him, jinx him. <laughs> good one will get on base. But even left-handers are only hitting 234. Now Hermanson has allowed just two earned runs in the last 24 innings, but look at Goodwin. Batting 429 since April 19th. He looks at a strike here, and it's two and two. Goodwin, of course, the first career Grand Slam yesterday. Only 14 career home runs. He also had a career high five runs batted in. Strike three called, and Goodwin knew it. Slider on the outside edge. He side doored him. Yeah, just a very good pitch here. Coming right at you, coming into your screen. Hermison. Rears back there. Remember, he got two of these pitches called for strikes earlier. He goes right back out there in Widger, and he gets the strikeout. A good one. So now Terry Shumpert hitting 250 with a homer and 12 ribbies. Three for seven in the Mets series, including that home run. And four RBIs against the Mets. Strike one to Shumpert. Shump hitting the ball hard right now. Five of his last seven hits have gone for extra bases. Four RBIs over the weekend against the Mets. Rockies have lost two in a row and five of six. The Rockies start tonight five back of Arizona in the West. Three games under 500 the Rockies. That's a new low water mark for the year. Stairs two and one to Shumper. and foul two and two Rockies trying to turn around the month of May you know they've only had one winning month of May in franchise history that came in 96 when they went 14 and 11 even in a wild card year the Rockies were sub 500 in May two balls two strikes Getting Lance, giving Lansing a much deserved day off. Lansing's played pretty much every game this year. Strike three call to Shumpert. Hermanson has struck out both Goodwin and Terry Shumpert. Well, the most strikeouts in a game for Hermanson is nine. Last in 1998. Straight from the grip. Ball stays and backs up. Shump thought that ball was low and out of the strike zone. Nice job by Woodger to keep it in the strike zone. This is just the second road start of the year for Hermison. It's the only road start. It was a nine-inning, six-hit shutout against Philadelphia. He's yet to give up an earned run on the, on the road. He's yet to pitch a Coors Field this year. That one gets away from Woodger. It wasn't where he wanted it. It's called the ball to Larry Walker. So Walker comes in, as he puts it, hitting an ugly 360. And I said, Walk, you're just too hard on yourself. He said, you're right, I am hard on myself. He said, I'm never happy when it comes to my production. Widger having a ticket of a time hanging onto that ball. Let's look at Walk's hot zones. We've shown it to you before. Obviously likes the ball up out over the plate away from him. Does not like the ball in on his hands or something off speed out of the way where that 176 batting effort where Hermerson tries to go out there. Walker's seven game hitting streak and over that stretch he is 13 for 29 with two home runs. Ball four. A four pitch walk to Larry Walker after Hermanson struck out both Goodwin and Shumper. And that's not something that Hermanson has done very much this year. In 35 innings he's only walked nine batters and struck out 13. Well in fact the entire Expo staff that's only the 58th walk for the Montreal Expo staff. Arizona is next in the National League with 76 free passes. Here's Jeff Cirillo, 329, one homer, 18 ribbies, and Jeff has an eight game hitting streak. For that stretch, he's 13 for 31. A 
double yesterday. He now has 11 and is tied with Eric Young, Mike Piazza, Rico Pronia for the lead in doubles in the National League. His career high for doubles, 46 back-to-back -back years in Milwaukee. Last year, he had 36. He's on pace for 66 this year. Cirillo. How about that? Two quick strikeouts and can't find a strike zone. Well, Cirillo's really done a nice job of getting the bat out in front of home plate, making contact on some pretty good pitches this weekend. I know he inside outed two balls, one out into the gap. Bouncing ball at the middle. Cabrera's got it. Throw to first. Vidra was late to the bag. That'll do it. The walk does not cost Hermanson. He pitches a shutout through one, and that's where we are. One inning in the books. So far, no score for Coors Field. Stevens leading off for the Expos. And he goes after the first pitch just under the glove of Helton, a lead single for Lee Stevens. Stevens coming in, hitting 238. So Stevens is aboard, the lead man for the Expos. Here in the second inning, Jose Vidro is next. Hey, looking to put your sports knowledge to the test? Be sure to tune in to Sports Geniuses. A new nightly game show that will challenge the most knowledgeable of sports fans. Sports Geniuses, weeknights at 6 and 11, right here on Fox Sports Net. Be a genius to figure out. Jarvis would love a double play ball. gets away from Maine he can't find it and that'll take away the probability of the double play as Stevens trots to second wild pitch charge to Jarvis well, remember the ball game in Montreal he tried to go with a breaking ball down to get him out he goes with one here and a reverse spin off that slider just crawls up the chest protector of Maine and over into foul territory that allowed the runner Stevens to move down to second See if he pitches Vidro any different now. Well, it changes the at bat for Vidro, too. He's now going to just try to get it to the right side to get Stevens over to third. And what you try to do as a pitcher is combat that by Trey taking the ball to the outside half of the plate. And if he hits it to the right side, he's really going to have to get out front and pull the baseball. Goes the other way. Foul. Just foul. Now see if Jarvis has the same confidence in the slider as he did in Montreal, throwing it to the outside half of the plate. It's from one of the robotic cameras down in the Rockies dugout. Foul by about a foot and a half. What's First great time. about that robo shot? You can see how much the ball turns off a of bat. Well, you like that. I like the views and the shots you get out of this and the slow motion that you can take with it. Strike three call. Big pitch from Jarvis. When it started in Montreal, same pitch, same person, Pedro right here, slider, looking to break right down on the outside corner. Great frame job by Maine to hold it, and he gets the strikeout, a very big strikeout. Pedro hitting 364 with runners in scoring position. Now Chris Widger, the hot hitting Chris Widger, hitting 310 on the year with four homers, 12 ribbies. He has a hit in five straight. He has gone seven for 18 over that stretch with two home runs. Foul back. Ball one strike to Widger. Uh, you notice the pattern with Jarvis more than anything. He works that inside half on right-handers. He's going to pound it on your hands. You're going to have to get out in front to hit the baseball. Uh, Widger on the road having a little more fun. 345. Out of play. Ball and two strikes. Well, one thing deceiving, too, about Jarvis, people talk about his control, but he's got good velocity, too. 93 miles an hour fastball. Yeah, that's why Widger was a little bit late getting there. Tardy to class, as they would say. Yeah. Well, Jarvis, a little tardy getting to the big leagues, and hopefully this time he'll stay. Did not go around, and it's two and two now to Widger. on that one out 
side, and it's now a full count. Now, when Jarvis misses, he misses with that purpose, and when he misses, it's just by a little bit. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not a big miss. It's enough to make that hitter bite at the baseball. Yeah, even on the misses, the hitters are usually a check swing. Yeah, they're, they're, they're looking at it pretty good. And strike three ball. Wizard might have been looking for something else. I don't know, but a fastball to knees. Back-to-back -back strikeouts now, Vidro and Widger. But Jarvis and out away, a wiggling off this hook. Well, this is a great setup by Maine, too. Now, watch how late he moves. He's given the sign, tapping the glove and the target. As he starts that, he looks like he's rocking out, but he actually rocks to the inside half. That may have fooled Widger a little bit himself. They're going to walk Michael Barrett now. Barrett, the home run yesterday to tie the ball game in the seventh at Pac Bell Park, and then the Expos won it in the ninth. So Barrett, the number eight hitter, they'll walk him to go after Dustin Hermanson, who is not a good hitter. Hermanson hitting just 83 on the year. That's ball four. Well, get one game is never enough, and there are great field level season ticket locations available for the 2000 Colorado Rockies season. Some great teams coming in. A lot of talent. We call the Rockies. 303 Rockies for more information. Hermanson one for 12 on the season. Any reason you don't, you don't know a lot about these Expos obviously with no television package and really no English speaking radio. And they're doing it over the internet now. Not a lot of coverage, but some pretty good young players. So yeah. now you now you go out, Dave. Here's where you can't make a mistake. And you know, you're absolutely right. I mean, Hermes is not a great hitter. He's one for 12 right now. But what you don't want to do, you don't want to make a mistake. You've worked too hard with two strikeouts. You go out and give something up now to your 9-0 hitter, Hermes. Career batting average of 85. He's a little under. He's at 083 now. He would remind many uh, old-time baseball fans of Hank Gary. What do you know? Hermanson comes through with a hit. Buckhand, Lee Stevens score. They're going to hold him now. And the throw from Walker up the line just a little bit. How's that? The respect for Walker's arm. Stevens does not score from second on a base hit to right. Uh, Stevenson does, Stevens does not have a lot of good speed. So with Stevens, what you don't want to do as a third base coach is having thrown out at home plate. He would have been thrown out by about 15 feet here. He doesn't even get that good of a break. They hold him up and send him back. Lee Stevens over from the Texas Rangers. Last year split time with Palmero as the DH. Now the top of the order up with the bases loaded. Orlando Cabrera. We'll see how they attack Jarvis if they do it early in the first at back. Cabrera swung at the first pitch as well. Bergeron and White. Too high. Ball one to Cabrera, who sent Goodwin all the way to the warning track in straightaway center field. Expos in that two game sweep outscored the Rockies 19 to 6, but that's a bit misleading. Both games were very close until the bullpen for the Rockies gave up a bunch of runs in the late innings of both contests. Broken bat help he's got it. He'll take it to the bag himself, and the Expos will leave him loaded. Good job of pitching by Kevin Jarvis, and the respect of Walker's arm and right prevent the Expos from getting on the board. Still scoreless from Coors Field. You fans enjoying this game so far? Uh, young baseball fans, good to have the youngsters out at the ballpark tonight. Seems the Rockies can score here in the second. These young fans hoping that Todd Helton, Jeffrey Hammonds, and Napy Perez can get the offense going against Dustin Hermanson. Hermanson gave up a walk in the first and struck out two. Helton was not successful against Hermanson in Montreal. He was 0 for 3 with a sacrifice in that ball game. Matter of fact, Hermanson struck him out. Got a couple of ground balls. Helton with four walks yesterday. That ties a team record. Look at that on-base percentage. 
25 ribbies. That's third best in the league. Tatis has 28. Guerrero 27. Helton goes after the first pitch and hits a high foul ball out of play. Helton 337 batting average. Six homers, 25 ribbies. Helton, like Schumper, has hit the ball hard. Eight of his last nine hits have gone for extra bases. I find it interesting now that Hermison's just pounding that outside half of the plate against Helton, and he did it against Walker. That pitch stayed on the inside half, but Widger was out on the backside of the plate. I just think he feels like with right field, he's just he does not want to give up a home run to right field against Walker or help neither one. The Rockies have five left-handed hitters in the lineup tonight, three right-handed hitters. Talked about Hermison's numbers, 234 against lefties, right-handers hitting just 190 against him. Cirillo. Shumpert and Hammonds are going, oh man. I'll let it play again. Now two of the young stars will be watching for many years to come. Guerrero and Helton. Well, Helton with 25 RBIs. Guerrero with 27 on the year. Bouncing ball, Pedro. Second. It's pretty good pitching there. You notice what the sequence and how he worked it away, 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 and then all of a sudden ran the fastball in the inside half. Todd was not able to handle it. This fastball has ranged from 87 tonight all the way to 95. How is the guy able to take some off and put some back on? Well, you just the way I used to try to do is just take more friction on the ball, just put it a little farther back in your hands and will tell you that the more friction, the less velocity out of the hand. Unless you reach back, get a little more arm speed, like he did there on Hammonds. His rear back fired him. And the hitters can't detect that. The tough arm to, speed, tough really. to pick it up. Yeah, tough to pick up the arm speed. Same rotation coming in. That's why the circle change is so effective. Fastball outside to Hammonds, who's hitting 286. Homer and three ribbies. That home run was a game winning home run in St. Louis. Hammonds yesterday off two for seven in the Mets series. Stairs. Hermanson, you go back to last year. Last 12 starts for him. He has gone seven and three with a 2.50 earned run average. there and it's two and two now to Hammonds. Starters for Montreal have gone at least six innings in the last eight games. Well, that's why you attribute out of the last ten they've won seven. Swing and a miss. Hammonds out. That's two outs in the second and three strikeouts for Hermanson. Because they got a pretty nice, they're pretty nice combination out of the bullpen when they go to close out a game. You've got Klein and Strickland to set up in Urbina, and you get to the ninth, it's over. Look at this. Fastball right on that outside half of the plate. 94 miles an hour. You reach back, got all the extra on that one. You can see the late swing from Hammonds. And now Perez. You mentioned Urbina, seven saves already this year. Fouled back by Nafee. And he, like Schumpert and Helton, hit the ball hard. Uh, Perez, last six hits have all gone for extra bases, including a home run yesterday. Six for 14 in the Mets series, with four doubles, a triple, and a home run. Down the line, but slicing foul and out of play. Two strikes now on Nafee Perez. Good to see Perez make solid contact again. Struggled the first three weeks of the season, but starting to show signs of breaking out in a big way. Slaps it foul again. Well, the one thing you've seen him do, Dave, is all of a sudden he is on top of the baseball. A lot of line drives over your infielders. A lot of balls hit hard into the outfield. See Perez's numbers against Hermison, 300, but in the ball game and in the start in Montreal, he was 0 for 3. 
Hits this one to right. Rocky's first hit. Boy, his hands really stayed back on that one. Well, that was a great at bat by Nate. Look at it straight ahead here for Napier. Now watch the front side comes. And he just reaches out and throws the head of the bat right at it. The second swing here. If you get right here, the biggest problem Napier had was he was coming up in his zone. He gets up on top of it and not not get down on a baseball. When you rise up out of that crouch, it changes the plane. Your vision moves. Your eyes jump up about six inches, and then obviously the fly to the ball changes. So that time he stayed down in the crouch. Stayed down right on top of the baseball and hit the line drive to right field. Here's Brent Main. Main over his last eight, as you see, hitting 286. No homers. Two runs batted in for Main. Both have come on sacrifice flies. job behind the plate he's thrown out seven of 13 would be base dealers that's second best in the National League well before the season started and they traded Henry Blanco one of the best defensive catchers to come through the Rocky system in a long time Paul Egan's found yeah, it's pretty tough right here to handle something like this yeah, right off his heel right at you but for Henry, Henry was a guy that I thought Blanco that caught the ball very well, threw very well. So Maine had some shoes to fill defensively of catching and throwing, and he has filled those wonderfully. He's erased any questions at all. And service. Service has been good behind the plate. Petrick has filled in. Well, Maine, his dad, a, a junior college coach, his father, Mike Maine, and he learned the finer points of catching from his dad. We're talking about putting a video together he really understands the art of catching how to frame a pitch how to block pitches one of the secrets he said to blocking a pitch is to know the pitcher's stuff and to know where he's going to miss when he misses he has caught a no-hitter in his career Brent Saberhagen when they were with the Royals together in 91. Two balls and a strike here to Brent Maine. I bet you Maine is actually glad he's thrown over a couple times. Gives that ankle just a little bit more Slow. time to heal. Start to get the blood back in there again and start to get a feeling back in the heel. Probably thinking, go ahead, throw over there a couple more times. It'll help me out. Did he get turned around on that pitch? That was unbelievable. That was a fastball right in on top of his hands, and he turned on that pitch and was able to pull it. Watch at the location. Look at the location of it. Right in on top of his hands. He's able to get the head out and turn on that ball in a hurry. That might send a message to the Expo dugout and their pitching staff. Try to go in there. He's quick with hands on the inside half. And you notice there, when one pitching mistake that just happened, and, and this is kind of got to work with your catcher pitcher both. Came set. Widger had already moved to the outside half of the plate. He steps off. Widger's still setting up out there. As a hitter, you notice that. Obviously, off, he didn't throw it there. Off the end of the bat, looking to go there, but Hermanson missed, and it actually helped him out. So the Rockies are gone. Two out single does no damage. Guerrero, he'll come up third when we come back to Coors Field in a moment. The Mets scored a run yesterday in the sixth, three in the seventh, two in the eighth, three in the ninth. Kevin Jarvis so far in this one put up goose eggs through the first two innings. Pitched well. Had to work out of some jams. A bases, lo bases loaded jam in the last inning was able to get out of it. He'll come right again, right through the heart of the odor again for the Expos. Peter Bergeron will lead off. He has one of three hits for the Expos. It was a double over Jeffrey Hammonds. 
Bergeron hitting just 214 on the year. He was batting leadoff when we were in Montreal last week. I didn't ask, but I'll guess that Bergeron moved down to the number two spot to see some more fastballs and get him a little bit more comfortable. Uh, they want him to be, want him here and want him to be successful at the center field position because he can cover so much ground out there. Cabrera hit second last week, one ball game, and then hit eighth in the next game. It's moved all around the order. Pretty constant, though. You have White, Guerrero, and Stevens in the lineup every day. Not gone out of play till two strikes on Bergeron. Two for four for Bergeron in that series with the Rockies last week. Looking inside, and the pitch goes outside and foul. Come on, Bruce, you got to catch that. Speaking of Bruce, trimming the third base umpire. Look at this, 22 years old in the big leagues, another one of the fine young players. Now with the Montreal Expos. Drafted by the Dodgers in the fourth round. Came off of Jerry DePoto. Well, the name like Bergeron, you'd think he's French-Canadian, but no, he's from St. Petersburg, Florida. Just missed. One ball, two strikes. Deflects it and Shumper can't catch up. Bergeron, look at his speed. Going to second, he's in there. He stayed on the bag and another double for Bergeron. Boy, now, is he fast. Now you know why you like him. I mean, he can cover ground in the outfield and he got to second base in a hurry. As a pitcher, your reaction, try to get to everything you can. But this time, it might have been better off if they'd left it low. First slide. Shump tries to get back in, spins out in the dirt. Ball ends up out into the outfield, and Walker has to come a long way. He barehanded, throws it into second base. Rondell White looks at strike one. White hit a ground ball to third base his last time up. So for the second straight inning, the Expos have a runner at second and nobody out. Last inning, it was a single by Stevens, and he went to second in a wild pitch. You know, White's been very successful with runners in scoring position, 393 average. That's why, despite hitting just 282, he has 18 runs batted in. second in this similar situation Jarvis was able to strike out both Vidro and Widger if he strikes out White and Guerrero ooh. well go back all the way to the first inning Dave where Bergeron let off fly ball right field should get Bergeron over to third it will so White moves the runner Bergeron's at third with just one out here in the third inning. And that brings up Vladimir Guerrero. Coming up immediately after the game, it's the all-new National Sports Report, the nightly news show that recaps today in sports from a fresh perspective. Tonight, Avalanche Red Wings highlights. Braves and Dodgers going head-to-head, -head, two of the best teams in the National League, plus playoff coverage from the National Basketball Association. The National Sports Report tonight, right after the game. Bouncing ball will get the run home. Guerrero out at first, but Bergeron scores. And the Expo is able to cash in. The double from Bergeron going to third on the fly ball from White and the ground ball from Guerrero. Yeah, but what a shame. I mean, what a shame because the ball deflects off Jarvis's glove, ends up into the outfield. Bergeron takes the gamble. He's safe. And then now Guerrero with an easy ground ball over to Nafi Perez. The look at Bergeron coming in to score the first run. Now, really, there should be no run. There really shouldn't be right now. I mean, right. 
if, if Jarvis is able to feel that ball, or even if he doesn't deflect the baseball, I think Terry Shumpert probably gets it out behind second base. Yeah. He was on the move. Well, at worst, if it goes up the middle for a base hit, he's at first base. Don't know if he goes to second base, but at worst, he'd be at second base right now. Instead, he's home. And the Expos are on the board, and Lee Stevens is the batter. A 2-0 count. Stevens singled his first time up. walk to Stevens a rare walk from Jarvis as you pointed out he had only walked one coming into this start walked one intentionally and now his second walk tonight well, he's walked three so far on the air with the intentional walk you just mentioned but those other two walks who were they Stevens and Stevens again now Jose Vidro Vidro struck out looking his first time up and auto parts by Dodge in a perfect world everything would be different and by Taco Bell one nothing our score here the Montreal Expos in the lead over the Rockies as the Rockies come up in the bottom of the third inning against Dustin Hermanson has been pretty tough so far walking Walker and giving up a single to Perez Kevin Jarvis, right-handed pitcher, left-handed batter. 2.23 to go in Detroit. And right now, the Red Wings leading the Avalanche 2-1. to one. Third period, just over two minutes to go there. Jarvis swings the bat pretty well. 0 for 2 in his last start against Hermison, a ground ball to short, a ground ball to second base. taking a little bit of a beating tonight. Foul ball off the mains foot. And that foul ball off the top of the foot of Chris Widger. See, I like that catching gear he got that he has on, don't you? Yeah. Matching gray and all oh, the red yeah. trim. Yeah. Baseball stitching on the helmet. A little bit like the hockey goalie, Patrick Waugh. Strike three call to Jarvis. Fourth strikeout already for Hermanson. Buddy Bell, in our Geico Direct moment, quoted after yesterday's game in which the Mets won again by scoring in double figures for the second straight game. It's not Coors Field. There's no doubt in my mind you can pitch here. And Jarvis has done a good job of pitching here tonight, giving up one run on four hits through three innings. And Hermanson has also pitched well here. Well, the both pitchers, if you go back and you broke down every one of the at-bats against every guy, Dave, you'd know how many pitches have they thrown above the thighs the entire night. And if they have, it's been so far out of the strike zone, guys aren't swinging at it. Everything else is down and moving in the strike zone. Goodwin struck out looking, looked at five pitches in his first at-bat. at a strike here and is in the hole one and two Rockies at home now six and four one and two on this homestand with three games remaining and then on the road again in fact after this homestand 12 of the next 15 will be on the road way outside under a minute to go now from Detroit 
Patrick Waugh has been removed from the net, and the Red Wings have just scored an empty net goal. So the Red Wings are going to even the series, or excuse me, win the first game of the series and still be down in the series two games to one to the Avalanche. The Red Wings win tonight in game three. The Avalanche still hold a 2-1 advantage in that best of seven series. Three and two here to Tom Goodwin. Ball four. Goodwin is aboard. Now let the games begin. So that sets up an important game four, doesn't it? You betcha. And it'll be right here on Fox Sports Net. Red Wings Avalanche coverage begins at 5.30 on Friday. That'll be actually game five, which will now be necessary. Red Wings Avalanche game five Friday at 5.30. The Avalanche and the Red Wings. We'll see what happens on Wednesday in that series. And we'll have the game five on Friday right here. Now Terry Shumpert. Remember Goodwin stole two bases against Montreal in one game last week. Hermanson is paying close attention. Well I think Hermanson realizes that he cannot allow him with one out to get out into scoring position because of the way Jarvis has pitched. They've had him on the ropes. He's been able to get off the ropes. This will be a very low scoring ball game. And there goes Goodwin. The pitch taken high. Goodwin has his sixth straight stolen base, and that was easy. Widger had no chance. Goodwin with six stolen bases now to lead the team. High leg kick there and a ball up above. That allowed Goodwin to get that jump. Well, I'll tell you what, speed is something that, is, that you really, really... I tell you, it's not something you can coach. Let me correct the myself. Too. In the outfield. Hunter, seven stolen bases. Goodwin now with six. So Hunter, who's been nursing a sore knee since that series in St. Louis when he climbed the center field wall. Now 2-0 to Shumpert. And you see what speed does. You see Hunter with seven stolen bases. Shumpert has two. Goodwin in between with six. Speed diverted the attention of Hermanson to Goodwin. Fastball at 93, got it by him. Well, and if they're not careful, if Vidro and Cabrera do not do a good job of holding good one at second base, he'll steal third. The job now, watch the pitcher let Rich Donnelly take care of your middle infielders. That's a swing and a miss, and a ball that gets by Widger. That's a misfire. That'll be a pass ball on Widger, and Goodwin takes third. Hey, you watch. This has to be a misfire here by Hermison. A crisscross with his catcher. Look at the ball get all the way by him. I mean, he didn't even see the ball at all. And the reaction from Widger, I think he was looking for the slider, and he got the fastball. He's lost a clip up on one of his shin guards, so he's going to have to go to the dugout. And he found it. Widger lacing up the shin guards. And the Rockies have a chance to tie the game here with a runner at third and just one out. a pass ball on Widger. Stolen base and a pass ball. All followed by the walk. So the Rockies have a guy at third without benefit of a hit here in the third inning. Now the infield staying back. Ground ball and Goodwin could score. They're in at the corners back up the middle. And a fly ball 
well hit. Out goes the shortstop, Cabrera, and Goodwin's going to test his arm. That was a mistake by Cabrera to not give way to White. He's going back, and Goodwin, with his speed, able to score. A sack fly to the shortstop. Wow. That's what a speed will do for you, but I think White lost the baseball, Dave, right at the very end. We're not going to see him here, but right before Cabrera's calling him off, but then White backs off. Cabrera, who does have a strong arm. I see, I just think right in here, I don't think White had the baseball because he was late getting there, and that ball was hit high enough for him to get there, and I just don't think he found it up in the sky. No, you could be right then, and maybe I've been too hard on Cabrera. White never called him off, so Cabrera had to make the catch. But really, by White, that's a mistake then on his oh, part. Sure. Not be able to pick up that ball out there. He's See, looking up at the lights, shaking his head. He's shaking his head right now. He lost sight of the ball coming in. That, it could be because if he catches the baseball, I don't think they send Goodwin. Now Walker, he paints the line. That's a fair ball. Walker will have a double. And that'll extend the hitting streak to eight games. Well, as an on-deck header, you're responsible for your runner at third base. He's obviously cannot see the throw coming from the outfield, so that's when you become a coach. Walker telling him to get on the infield side, or excuse me, the foul territory side, and then go right back to the sweet swing of Larry Walker. He walked on four straight pitches away right into that area and zone earlier. This one, he rifles down the left field line for a one-out, or excuse me, two-out double. Rockies and Expos tied at one. Now with a base hit from Cirillo, the Rockies can take the lead. Cirillo bounced out to the shortstop, Cabrera, his first time up. All one to Cirillo. Cirillo's average has gone up well over 100 points since the middle of April. percentage this year well over 400 this guy does he's not give away an at bat he hasn't done it all year oh. well, let's look at his hot zone we looked at Larry Walker's earlier into the ball game so now we'll go back and look at Cirillo's likes the ball out over the plate and he likes it up he does not like it in above his hands or down and in that's a little bit unusual for right-handed hitters a slider away, the average 235. The guy's getting ahead, throwing the ball on the outside half of the plate. Cirillo into the gap. That'll go for extra bases. Here comes Walker to score. Cirillo chugging into second. He is safe. Back-to-back -back doubles, Walker and Cirillo, and the Rockies have the lead. Cirillo a dozen doubles. Well, I just get ready to say, 12th double of the year for Cirillo. Two for four in the ball game against Hermison last week. He had two singles in that ball game, but comes up with a big double here to drive in his 19th RBI. Let's go back to that hot zone and then follow the flight of the pitch. Where is it? Right out in the middle of the plate, knee high, right where he likes it. His average above 350 in that area. Drove it right out into the gap on a 2-0 count. Ahead of the throw from the outfield, now Todd Helton. Fastball, strike one. Came inside that time to Helton after pitching him away his first at bat. Right, he's trying to stay away from all the lefties. Maybe Walker breaking him of that with that line drive double down the left field line. Cirillo at second, his 12th double, and... It out of play. How about this from Cirillo? That's RBI number 19. Cirillo is 11 for 22 this year with runners in scoring position. That's 500. He gets after it. His eyes light up when he can get those RBIs. Keep it 
an 0-2 count. Melton with a rocky best, 25 ribbies on the year. Walker now with 13, Cirillo 19, Shumpert 13. The part -time. Watch the reaction of Jeff Cirillo at second base. He's getting his lead in preparation for the ball to be hit in fair territory. As soon as it's hit, it's, well, let's just take a little jog in the park. That ball's gone. And how good, how good is Todd Helton in the year 2000? And Hammonds, has he gone back to back? High fly, deep right center. He has! had not given up an earned run average earned run on the road before this start tonight and you said it dave well he hasn't been to mile high either that's right welcome to denver five runs in the third inning against hermison and to go back to that thought on todd helper how good is helping in the month of april well 25 rbis what was he a year ago just 13 and for cirillo with 19 rbis now he only had 11 in the month of April. Jeffrey Hammonds with a fastball and a lot of power out to right center field. Let's look back at that home run pitch to Todd Helton. What I think Guerrero can do is watch that one sit out. Pitched right in the middle of the plate, fell tie. You couldn't have set it on a tee any better for Todd Helton. back to back with Helton and it's a five run third inning for the Rockies and Nafi Perez the batter Perez singled his first time up now back this way all in a strike to Perez this inning the walk double double home run home run one ball two strikes so Cirillo comes up with a double then home runs by Helton and Hammonds back-to-back -back doubles followed by back-to-back -back home runs and they're all smiling in that dugout Slapped on the ground, Barrett. And that'll do it, but the Rockies send eight men to the plate. Five of them score. Two home runs in the inning. A five-run inning for the Rockies, who now lead by four. I've won now the lead, and I think it kind of started, George, really, with the walk to Goodwin. And he diverted the attention of Dustin Hermanson. Got the stolen base, the pass ball. He comes home on a pop-up to shortstop. And then the Rockies went crazy. Two doubles, two home runs. Yeah, they got right in the middle of the lineup. And, and I think, as you said, it disturbed Hermanson to the point that all of a sudden the ball rose in the strike zone. The ball Helton hit out. Belt high. So Helton with a home run and a home run also from Hammonds. And now a deep fly ball from Widger. Goodwin looking up, and that's gone. Ball's flying out of here all of a sudden. First two innings were scoreless, and now a home run from Widger, his fifth of the year, and it's 5-2. to two. Well, we've always said solo home runs did not beat you at Coors Field. We'll see if that remains true. Well, now a 5-2 ball game changes it a little bit of the complexion of the way he would pitch. You know, fastball right in the heart of the plate. He hit it out into the deepest part of the ballpark over the head of Goodwin. Still 5-2 ball games. 
Stay consistent, stay strong, and down in the strike zone. Now Barrett hits the line drive to center field. Good one charging, he won't get there. They sit for Barrett. Barrett aboard, and the Expos start the fourth with a home run and a single. As you know by now, the Avalanche lost tonight and forces at least a game five. Detroit winning tonight, three to one. We'll have game five for you right here on Fox Sports Net. Red Wings Avalanche starting at 5.30 Friday. That'll be game five, which will now be necessary. Necessary. Trying to use the slap bunt that time by Hermison. The infield moving a lot of holes there, particularly on the left side of the infield because Cirillo was charging and Perez was going to cover second base with Helton coming. He faked the bunt and tried to slap the ball to get it through the infield. Cirillo still in on the grass and charging. Hermanson showing bunt. Gets it down but foul. Now two strikes on Hermanson. So this is where you change your thought process as a pitcher right now. You don't want to leave anything up here in the strike zone with two strikes, even if you think he's a guy that'll hit the ball out of the ballpark. Only reason I say that is the only reason I say that, Dave, is you get a pitch up here, he can handle it, all of a sudden he hits it out of the ballpark, gets a base hit as he did in his last at bat. Running again. Cirillo's got it. He'll go to first. Sacrifice complete and Maine trots down to third in case Barrett had any ideas of trying to go from first to third on the play. So Hermanson getting Barrett down to second base. He's there with one out. I love bunt plays to watch them because there's guys moving all over the infield. Boy, and, you, and you can see how it yeah. opens up so much too. Now everything works that way. I mean it just opens up the whole infield. Hermanson helps himself. Oh, we watched Bobby Valentine. You know, you talk about moving infield. Yeah. Yeah. Now he left everybody back and charged them in. He started that in Texas when he managed the Rangers. But if he took that to Japan, they thought he was really doing some strange things. Barrera base hit. Put the brakes on Barrett at third. Another hit for the Expos. Cabrera singles. Now they're at first and third. Now, Jarvis is ever going to make a play. This is what he needs to make it. Make it right now. Make a good pitch. This ball again. You see the ball coming up in the strike zone. Problem the Rockies pitchers had all weekend. Jarvis getting behind home plate to block it. Throw over the head of the cutoff man, Cirillo. Now, meeting of the minds is Latchman, I'm sure, pointing out the fact that Jarvis and his pitches are coming up. <laughs> Now, what you have a tendency to do, Dave, when your pitch comes up, when you're feeling strong, doing what you're supposed to, you rush a little bit, the elbow drops, the pitches rise. You're not in that good downward plane, which Jarvis has been able to exhibit in his first two starts. Bergeron, speedy, tough guy to double up. In fact, he has not grounded into a double play so far this year. 85 at bats, two doubles tonight. like that it's a tie ball game first career home run for Bergeron well the Expos didn't take him long to come back well let's look at the flight of this pitch Dave see where it is in the strike zone they just came out and talked to him about getting the pitch down in the strike zone doesn't look down does it looks about bell ties that crossed home plate Back by White, strike one. There's Geron having a coming out party tonight. A guy hitting 205 coming into the game. Two doubles and a home run. One more look at the home run. Again, I'm looking more for the flight of the baseball. Pitch was up above the belt.
infield hit for Rondell White. Now the Expos very quickly now have nine hits up on the board. Perez deep over into the hole and a snap throw over. That ball looked like instead of staying down, Dave, that ball skipped up on up on Todd Helton. Looks like it hit right at the corner of the grass and the dirt. Yeah, it jumped straight up on him. Helton tried to backhand the ball. A lot of times first baseman will try to scoop the ball. And now you have to face Vladimir Guerrero. So far he has hit two ground balls to Perez. And now a line drive to right field for a base hit. The Expos are teeing off on Jarvis here, third time through the lineup. It all started with a home run by Widger, a single by Barrett. He was sacrificed over, single by Cabrera, home run for Bergeron, and now back-to-back -back singles by White and Guerrero. Well, and Buddy Bell sitting and talking with Marcel Latchman. He's already made a trip to the mound, so this is where you send your catcher or infielders in to call it. You try to get someone up in your bullpen, somebody that can get loose in a hurry to come in and try to stop the bleeding and stop the runs coming across by the Expos. But with this guy at the plate now, boy, you do not want to make a mistake with Lee Stevens. No, you don't. Four home runs on the year and a lot of power. Stevens coming over from Texas, as George mentioned, in a three-team trade in the spring. Down low, ball one. Still just one out for the Expos. And that out a gift on the sacrifice. Gabe White starts to loosen. And the Rockies in the pen. We're just in the fourth. Down low again. 2 and 0 to Stevens. Look at the difference from the first three innings. Kevin Jarvis, and now this inning, he has been roughed up. Still not off the hook. Got him to swing at a pitch down around the ankles, two and one to Stevens. He talked about his power, Dave. He was a career minor league player and went to Japan. He came back. He was the AAA American Association Player of the Year. He had over 30 home runs there, and he got the shot with Texas. Helton's got it. The second for one. The relay back to Jarvis in time. An inning-ending double play. But the Expos come back with four in the fourth. Bergeron's first career home run. A three-run homer. That tied it at five, and that's where we're at. They're all locked up at five due to the hustle of Jarvis. Even though he didn't beat up in the inning, give up a home run. Hustled over on this ball, hit to the right side. Good fundamentals here by Jarvis. Lee busted to get there. He knows he has Stevens coming, has low average speed, but still gets in a good position and stops the bleeding there. It's five to five. The Rockies have been out hit ten to five. Well, let's see if the hits just keep on coming. Ground ball to Stevens here. A flip to Hermanson and Main out number one in the fourth right, inning. This game a little bit different than the game on baseball history. This day in baseball history brought to you by Jeep. How about this one? On this date in 1920, Brooklyn and Boston, they had to suspend the game because of darkness. One to one the score, and both pitchers went 26 <laughs> innings in the game. Both yeah. starters stayed around for the whole thing. A one hopper that got by Hermanson and then over to Pedro. So on your scorecard, that goes one, four, three. Two quickly gone for Hermanson here in the fourth inning. Now Tom Goodwin, he'll take his time here, try to give Jarvis a chance to catch his breath. Goodwin kind of helped set up that third inning for the Rockies. He walked on a 3-2 pitch, stole second, went to third on a pass ball, scored on a sacrifice fly to the shortstop. That's right, the shortstop who went into shallow left field. Then Walker and Cirillo both doubled. Helton and Hammonds both homered. Well, don't you think you'll see a lot of that? I think the Rockies will score in bunches because of the speed, the line, the ability to hit line drives and hit the ball into the gap of Cirillo, Walker, and Helton. My imagination or is Goodwin taking more pitches now than he did earlier in the year? Well, I think he's taking more because he realized the advantage of his speed and the guys behind him. 
Outside two and one. I think you define your strike zone better. You know, you're always used to hear Lou Pinella, Pete Rose, and guys that obviously could hit a little bit saying the fact to find your strike zone and it can change in every at bat and meaning if you know you go up the first time and all that Hermison does is live on that outside corner then change your strike zone to that outside half and say if I see the ball it's away I'm driving it away if he's on the inside half you define that inside strike zone and stay there within that strike zone and look there and if it's not there you don't swing the bat 2-2 two -two pitch was away and hit away fouled away still 2-2 two and two to Goodwin so Goodwin, he needs just 22 more Grand Slams to tie Lou Gehrig. <laughs> Very well. Gehrig, the all-time leader with 23. Willie McCovey, the National League leader at 18. Robin Ventura was just in town for the weekend. He leads all active players with 14 career Grand Slams. The Grand Slam yesterday by Goodwin, the 27th at Coorsville, the 24th in Rockies history. Andre Scalaraga and Dante Bichette each hit six Grand Slams, all with the Rockies. You all up to date on Grand Slams now? I just get ready to tell you, how many, how many was I? I was had 23 to tie Gary. You didn't hit one? No, I didn't hit one, so I need 23 now. Chopper. Pretty amazing, though. You think of Ventura with 14. Yeah. I mean, he might have a chance. Yeah. He probably Outside still chance. has six, seven years to go oh, in yeah. his career, at least. Uh -huh. Maybe 10. I want a short change. Foul away again. 77 pitches now for Hermanson, too. Yeah, yeah just in the fourth inning. Third inning took a lot out of him. These foul balls have given Kevin Jarvis a chance to catch his breath over on the bench. Another foul ball. Here's a pitcher. Didn't you hate to face guys like Goodwin just keep slapping that ball? You know, it was really good at that. Wade Box and Rose both would fight off, fight off, fight off, fight off, and all of a sudden you look up and you're throwing him 12 pitches, and it's like, what the heck? What do you want? Where do you want me to throw? <laughs> just hit it at somebody. Ball. Three and two. Remember Walker's classic about that 11 pitch at bat, and then he tripled over the center fielder's head the other night. That was against Hampton. Yes. Fought off a bunch of pitches. Another one. Well, I've lost count. That's now 11 pitches that Goodwin has seen in this at bat. Six foul balls by Goodwin. bat by Goodwin. Oh, he just fought off pitch after pitch after pitch and they sit back right back up the middle. Those like about Goodwin, Hunter, oh, really all the Rockies here in 2000. Right out of the box. He's flying. He's looking and thinking if that ball gets by him at all, he would not hesitate to go to second base. He gets to first base, but same amount of time it took me to get to first base playing softball. The bag about 40 feet closer. <laughs> Man, does he get there in a hurry. And of course, Goodwin already a stolen base in this game. from Fox Sports Net, the in-sync. Now watch how this works. So you're going to get a shot of your catcher. You've got the runner. You've got the pitcher. It's all right here. You see the catcher's release down to second base. The throw way ahead of Goodwin and the tag by Cabrera. Excuse me, Vidro. And a retired him. And the reaction from Ridger. He's pretty happy after that stolen base by Goodwin earlier in the ballgame. Well, here is Vidro to lead things off in the fifth inning. Let's see if Jarvis can settle back down again. 
Pedro with a foul ball, and he's in the hole 0 and 2. Pedro, the only expo without a hit, and that includes Hermanson, the pitcher. Second straight inning, the Expos begin with a lead home run. When that ball first left the bat, I thought it was going to be a fly ball deep center, but not out of here. Well, I didn't either. And the pitch from Jarvis, not that bad of pitch. Vidro, good low ball hitter. Let's take a look at it now, right out of the hand of Jarvis. Yeah, that ball's down. Absolutely. And when you just golf this pitch out, you know, and you think about it, I'm Good one's chasing, and he thinks he has it the whole way. Great effort. Right here, he just missed it. Now another one from Wedger. There goes Goodwin to the wall again, and that's gone. Back to back for the Expos, and Wedger is hit two tonight. Both teams have gone back to back in this game. Vidra and Widger turn the trick for the Expos here in the fifth. The tank of Jarvis coming into this ballgame at 13 innings had only given up one home run. That pitch up out of the strike zone. That was a bad fastball, and as soon as it left the hand of Jarvis, I think he recognized where this would end up. Widger with a six-game hitting streak now, and he has hit four home runs in those six games. And Buddy Bell's going to come out to get Jarvis. Well, Buddy Bell upset with his pitching already from the weekend. And now here, Jarvis can't survive the fifth inning. He'll pitch four-plus innings, giving up seven runs on 12 hits. They're all earned. it for Jarvis. We'll be back. Boy, the bats, uh, they don't have many holes in them. Maybe at the end, but that's it. Seven runs, 12 hits for the Expos. Five runs, six hits for the Rockies, and we're in the fifth. And a dodge pitching change to the lefty, Gabe White. Well, White will come into the ball game, 14 and two-thirds, 13 hits, 19 strikeouts for White, and now it's time to eat up some innings. Yesterday's ball game, the Rockies went through some pitching there with Carrera came into the ball game, Belinda and then Jimenez pitched, so they used four yesterday to get through the ball game. You don't want to try to do that tonight. You hope White can slow down the bleeding. Boy, it happened all of a sudden, too, didn't it? Happened in, uh, actually, three outs. <laughs> Six runs in a hurry. Yeah, it was Jarvis kind of flirted with trouble in the first two innings and really got into it in the fourth. Fourth when the Expo scored four. They've already scored two on back-to-back -back homers here in the fifth. And this one a bouncer down to Cirillo. Fair ball. And Michael Barrett is retired. And as you know, the bullpen did not do the job in either game in Montreal and did not do the job in the last two games against the Mets. Will they do the job tonight? I don't think this game is going to end 7-5, to five, so if White can stop the bleeding, the Rockies' offense should be able to come back. Well, you know, how many people yesterday in the, in the Mets ball game day, they probably shut their television off when it was 11-3 to three or flipped the channel, and you flip back over, and all of a sudden it's 11-9 ball game. Hermanson, one for one officially in the game. Sack bunt his last time up. Raining in Pittsburgh. The Reds and the Pirates postponed tonight. Little tapper. Shumpert charges. He'll get Hermanson, and there are two gone now in the fifth. 
parents protect your child from the sun make sure they <laughs> i'll be okay parents protect your child from the sun make sure they're one of the first 15,000 fans to the gates on saturday may 13th and receive a specially designed kids cap courtesy of king supers you didn't know that did you play the giants the gates open at 1105. i knew all that did I, you i knew they were giving away hats and i knew about protecting your protect children from, from the, the sun. sun absolutely well, i usually use sunblock and now you can put a <laughs> hat on hat too. too yeah got it all covered so I've been reading that one for about two weeks, and I, they threw that protect your kids <laughs> at the top there. Yeah, they, they just do that to mess with you. They, you did it, didn't you? Yeah. Did you? I oh. just wanted to see. Did you do that? No. Yeah, you did. Cabrera, one for three. One ball, one strike here. Gabe White, who is retired both many spaces. You can't use a lifeline. You can't call anybody. Give me the combined distance of the two home runs. 830 feet. Missed it by 20. Cabrera gone. Goodwin has that. And the Expos are gone in the fifth. We are halfway through. 7-5 Montreal. Pedro, who led off with a home run, followed by a home run from Widger. And it's now 7-5 in favor of Montreal. Widger has homered twice in this game. He's looking up to the spot where they both landed. Way out there in straightaway center field. 7-5 as the Rockies now come to bat in the fifth inning. Gabe White came on to stop the bleeding by getting all three Expos he faced to end the fifth inning. Shumpert. 0 for 1, the sacrifice fly to shortstop. It's a nice time up. Well, you, you got to explain that too, though. He was about 150 or maybe 60 feet out into the outfield grass because Rondell White didn't get there. Still a fly ball to shortstop. And yet Goodwin running at third. Yes. But I don't get to say that, a, a sack fly to <laughs> shortstop very often. Swing and a miss. One ball, two strikes now on Schumper. Hey, you wonder, too, how long Hermeson will go 84 pitches now. <laughs> Shumpert, a little squibber to left. White coming on. He'll get there, and he saw that one. One out here in the Rockies' fifth inning. Larry Walker coming to the plate next. And coming up after our game is the all-new National Sports Report, the nightly news show that recaps the day in sports from a fresh perspective. Tonight, they'll have highlights of the Avalanche Red Wings game. Red Wings won 3-1. Braves and Dodgers highlights as well, plus coverage of the NBA. Walker, base hit. He's two for two. Wasted no time going after Hermanson's first pitch. Walker now with an eight-game hitting streak. He's hit over 400 during that stretch. Now Jeff Cirillo. He doubled home Walker. His last time up. Rockies now with seven hits. Following Cirillo. It's Helton and Hammonds who went back to back in the third. Second time this year the Rockies have hit back to back homers. They did it. Remember that game Daryl Kyle started here? Helton and Bragg went back to back off him in that second inning. Kyle, by the way, won again yesterday. He has now won five games this year for the Cardinals. He is five and one, and one loss coming here. easy. 
And then he'll call you when he gets to the line drive here right in. <laughs> you want to handle this one with me, Dave? the wide turn to get a better angle to go into second a very wide turn right in the middle of the bag and he puts the brakes on here and then Walker he makes the turn very hard into third base in the slide and he's safe well here's your opportunity you talked about Dave you said this game will not end seven to five first and third for Helton consider this Walker Cirillo and Helton have combined to hit well over 400 at home this year 409 before the singles by Walker and Cirillo. And it's 2 and 0 oh now to Helton. Ninety-four pitches in the ball game for Hermeson. It's just the fifth inning. because he broke so fast as soon as he recognized the ball got by Widger. Again, asking for the ball way away and then all the way back inside. It's a wild pitch. As soon as he recognized that ball got by Widger, Walker was off and running. 3-0 and to Helton. Let's see if he has the green light. So Walker scores to make it 7-6. to six. Walker hustling on those base paths to go from first to third on a single to left. Helton did have the green light, 3-0, and, oh, and fouls it out of play. Well, even though you're behind in the ball game, if it's the ninth inning, 3-0, Dave, I think they may throw up a red light for him, but if this guy swing the bat and what he has been able to do, you know, I mentioned it earlier, last year in the month of April, he only had 13 RBIs. Of course, he had a slow start last year, too, and already here you are the first day of May and Helton with 27 RBIs. Well, his average this year, 100 points better than last year. Elton calling it out of play. Rockies three games under 500, but where would they be without Todd Helton in the month of April? difference a year makes in the month of April. Three and two still to Helton trying to get that runner Cirillo home from second to tie the game. In Milwaukee Houston leading three to nothing. Molesky with a home run for the Astros. Preston Wilson is homered for Florida. They lead San Diego early two nothing in the third. In the 3 2 pitch, hammered to left field. Back goes White. He's at the wall. It's gone. Home run Helton. His second of the day. Forget about tying it. Helton Homer has given the Rockies the lead again. Oh, 
Sean Drake Barron. Now think back at all those at bats that Helton has seen. The ball was away, 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 and Hermerson was trying to stay out there again, and Helton just goes with the pitch. Hermerson working. See that ball down and away, out, even off the plate. Probably would have been a ball four. Instead, over the head of White, and a great catch by a fan in the outfield. Well, can Hammond do it again? Go back to back with Helton again? The way the ball's flying out of the ballpark tonight, I don't see why not. will be the earliest exit of the year for Dustin Hermanson. Yeah, out of the ball game in a hurry. He's averaged over seven innings plus when he comes in and makes a start for the Expos, but he'll exit early in this ball game with a hundred pitches and giving up eight runs. All I can say is water cooler beware. Eight seven Rockies. We have a pitching change and we'll be back. Tonight they took a beating over the weekend from both Masato Yoshi and Mike Hammond. Span Mike Hampton, sorry. Mike Hampton, uh, yeah. yeah they Dustin, beat him up Herman pretty good. <laughs> Dustin Hermanson here just got a nice cool drink after leaving here in the fifth inning, his earliest exit of the year. Yeah, just four and a third innings. You know, ten hits, eight runs, still responsible for Hammonds, and Matt Blank will come in and hope to fire up some blanks here. And run average 386 on the year is fifth appearance. Perfect name for a pitcher, isn't it? Blank. Todd Helton, 7 for 13, 538 in this homestand. And how about this from Helton? His ninth multiple home run game of his career already, only in his third year. And four of the multiple home run games have come at the Expo's expense. I'm going to learn to pitch him a little different. So Helton, two home runs tonight and four runs batted in. He now has 29 ribbies. And right now, depending on what Tatis will do, in fact, uh, look up at the board now, Tatis not even playing tonight. So Helton right now in the lead in the RBI column in the National League. Hammond's on at first. Hermanson, his line still responsible for him. And Perez the batter, he's one for two. seen 22 hits and 15 runs so far in this game coming off that wild weekend against the Mets. One ball, one strike to Perez. This for Matt Blank, his first year in the big leagues. This is the first time he's pitched on the road, and he makes his road debut at Coors Field. Last year, named the Expos Player Development Pitcher of the Year. He's done that two years running. Yeah, finally get the opportunity at the major league level. Just keep proving yourself over and over and over again. They got to give you a chance with the big ball. Malou well, using him in the right way, I think, with a young guy. He's easing him in in long relief, middle relief. Don't put him in a lot of pressure situations until he handles these, and then you move him a little bit farther along. Anybody handle young players better than Alou? Not recently. The development he is not able to do. We draw the second for one. The relay safe. Perez got there and beat it by an eyelash. Well, Perez extends the inning by hustling the first. Hammond's out in second. How close was this? Did he come off the bag a little bit early? He sure did. Good hustle by Nathy Perez. Good job by Hammonds. He's getting high fives for busting it up down at second. Now Brent Main, the batter. Swing and a miss. You 
watch guys that come over from veteran ball clubs, David, guys that grew up in an organization, Hammonds with Baltimore. In Cincinnati, you grew up down Barry Lark and Cal Ripken Jr. They teach you to play the game right. That's not dirty. Just play the game right and hard. Break it up a double play any way you can. Two strikes on Maine, who is 0 for 2. He and Shumpert. I guess you can include Jarvis in the group, the only guys without a hit for the Rockies tonight. Everybody for the Expos has a hit. Getting three here in the fifth to retake the lead, eight to seven. Singles by Walker and Cirillo, and then a home run by Helton. Almost hit for us. Two two balls, two strikes. Tonight start gives up three and two of them to Helton. Hermanson. Against San Diego in his second start this year, last in just five innings, gave up seven runs in that start. Here he leaves after just four and a third. Perez going with the pitch, and it's fouled away by Maine. Hermanson's ERA that came in under three is going to soar over three after this start. Hermanson getting through the first two innings unscathed, and the Rockies scored five in the third and have added at least three more here in the fifth. Outside, full count now, and Perez will be running. Two out. alive. Expos tomorrow will recall Jeremy Powell from the minor leagues. He was sent down because the Expos, with some days off, didn't figure to use their number five starter. He made one start in the minor leagues, and Powell, he gave up seven runs in five innings in that start. Inside, ball four to Maine. Get the pitcher up and out of the way here in the fifth. Well, baseball fans, while you're at the ballpark, pick up a copy of the Rockies magazine, the official magazine of the Colorado Rockies. This month, you can learn about a Rolando Orojo, his journey to the United States, and to the Rockies. You learn about Britt Maine, Darren Bragg, and an inside the home edition of Mike Lansing. This will be the second series of six to be sold this season. To receive it, go online by www.coloradorockies.com. Well, Gabe White, he had the bat in the on-deck circle, but now he gives way to the pinch hitter. Gabe White came on and retired all three men he faced, and Ledesma will pinch hit here. So instead of getting the pitcher up and out of the way, Buddy Bell pulling the strings and trying to go for a knockout punch here in the fifth inning. inning. See if he can come through as a pinch hitter. Outside ball one. Ledesma can make Buddy Bell look great with a base hit here. Now I had 
the count 2 and 0. Oh. Blank really doesn't throw the ball hard. He looks like he relies on off speed stuff. Perez at second, main at first, two out. The 2 0 -oh pitch to Ledesma is way too high. Ball three. Blank in 85 innings, walked 26 the year before, 19 and 90. Ball four. Back to back walks to Maine and now Ledesma, and they're loaded. They're loaded for Mr. Grand Slam, Tom Goodwin. And out comes Bobby Cuellar, the pitching coach, to try to settle down Matt Blank. Look at this. Four hits, no runs in the first and then innings three through five. <laughs> 18 hits and 15 runs. The late wake up call for the hitters tonight. Yeah, so you want to pitch in Coors Field. And inning five is yet to be over. The base is loaded. I think the uh, conversation here from Quayar is pretty simple. Look, you keep walking these guys, we don't have a chance. Let them hit it. <laughs> Well, good one. He had the grand slam home run last night. His only career grand slam and only the 14th home run of his entire career. So you certainly don't expect another one. Good one. He's been aboard twice. A walk and a single. Well, why not? Yesterday it was against the left-hander Cook. And he's facing the left-hander Blank. I know your mind's turning to come up with something out of Cook and Blank. <laughs> Inside. Plus, you put good one into that mix. say if Tom gets cooking against blank it would be a good win for the Rockies. <laughs> New truck was coming. That's pretty good. Good one by the way. The ninth man to come to the plate. Perez is at third. Means at second. Ledesma, he's on at first. One and two the count to Goodwin. Breaking ball, the ball's going to break away from him. Foul ball. We'll remember, last at bat for Goodwin, he hit the 12th pitch of the at bat for a base hit. He has seen six pitches in this at bat. Inside, that almost hit it. Full see, count, nowhere to put it. You see what I mean? There's not much movement out of Goodwin. He's able to hang over the plate or hang at the plate without any movement at all. So that tells me that he's seeing the ball really well out of the hand of Frank and being able to pick up the rotation. Bouncing ball should be the inning. Vidro's got it. Throw to first in time. The Rockies leave them loaded. But the Rockies also score three here in the fifth to retake the lead. The big hit, Todd Helton's home run. Rock 
Yankees come up with three. And Dave Justin Hermanson from the game, singled by Walker Sorrell, and a big up to be Todd Helton. Man, what a night he's had. Two home runs, four runs batted in. And the Rockies have retaken the lead, eight to seven. Rockies baseball on Fox Sports Net, brought to you by Sonic, America's drive-in. Coming soon, the Sonic Slam inning. Go by your area, Sonic drive-in, for a chance to win up to $25,000. Hey, we got a visitor in the booth. Oh, you start talking about Sonic, he, he yeah. starts... Hey, he, Dinger! He starts rubbing the Tommy. Ya? What's up, Dinger? How are you, Dinger? Good to see you. What, what do you think, nice. huh? Whoa. Whoa. Ooh, yeah, what do you think? Huh? This one is a head spinner. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Man, the ball has been flying, hasn't it, Dinger? Sure has. <laughs> How do you interview a mascot? How do you it doesn't talk? Wait, should we put the headsets on it? Yeah, I don't know if they'll do it. No, they won't work. I don't they think. Work? No, that, well, there we go. We can do it that way. Tavares, the new pitcher. Bergeron really gets up the line, but Perez able to gun him out. Good play, Napy Perez, to get the speedy Bergeron to begin things here in the sixth. All right, Snapey, good release here. Loads the gun and fires it to first base. But only by about a half a step. Bergeron, he has been quick tonight. Remember the ball that hit off of Jarvis's glove and passed Shumpert, and he turned that into a double. Now Tavares on in relief of Gabe White. Fastball to Rondell White is too high. Dinger, I don't know about the headset on that. Well, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> looks pretty good. It you can't hear much, though, can you? It looks like a nose ring more than anything else. <laughs> Rondell White, a single in the fourth. Fastball in there for a strike. Thanks, Dinger. Hey, thanks, thanks for coming Dan. By. Don't forget to give Dinger a call if you want him to come by and visit one of your parties and make right. a personal appearance. And a lot of fun. Whoa. I like the head thing. He spins it around. What'd you say? It's a spin around kind of night? Sure head spinning night? Head spinning night. Two balls, two strikes to Rondell White. Personally challenged the way things went in Montreal in the last two games of the Met series. The line for Hermanson, not a pretty one. Whoa. Three and two here to White. Hermanson went four and a third innings, giving up eight runs on ten hits, all runs earned. He walked four and struck out four. But really, the base is loaded. Blink was able to get out of it. And a walk here to Rondo White. He put White aboard with Guerrero coming up next. And of course it was Tavares who gave up the 430 foot blast by Guerrero. In fact, that's the last home run for Guerrero. That was the 100th of his young career. Guerrero just one for three in this game. He was only one for ten in the Giants series. Yeah, a very similar pitch there, except the one that he hit out of the ballpark was chest high. Rockies infield with Guerrero. Look at where Perez is. Now that's not your normal double play depth, but he hits the ball so hard you could still turn two from back there. Broken back into left center field. Goodwin gets it back in in a hurry. White still not running at full speed with that bruise on the knee. So Guerrero gets his second hit. And now there are two aboard with one out in the sixth inning. Well, that's all muscle from Guerrero. I tell you, the guy swings the bat so well. And it broke it off right in his hand. Now what Maine wants to see happen here is 
get the ball down on the ground, try to get a double play with one out. Now you see the strength of Guerrero. Watch this fastball in, and he just muscles it out over the shortstop set in Perez and into the outfield. So for Tavares now, one out. What you try to do is run that good hard sinker that Tavares has, try to run that away from Stevens and get the ground ball out. Stevens hit into the double play his last time up. Tavares. Stevens has always been a good fastball hitter. Tavares then changing speeds, keeping the ball out of the strike zone, down in the strike zone. That same pitch in Montreal, Jarvis went to the back door slider and got the ground ball. BP, BP, Middle half in on Stevens, it's a danger area. Swing and a miss. Fastball down around the ankles. White and Carrero on the base pass with one out. Stevens stays alive. Well, the, the Rockies are really trying to keep the ball down and away from Stevens. Let's check his hot zone as we have on many players tonight. Look at this, 188 if the ball's down and out of the strike zone. Bring it up about six, eight inches. Look how high of average, nearly 400 in both areas. Gonna get him out in above the hands, high and away, or run that slider down. Let's just see which way the Rockies go there. Good heat down. Having to count, if you can get him to bite on the, on the bait, you got a good start working. Team trade on March 16th. He came over from the Rangers. Brad Fulmer went from the Expos to Toronto, and the Blue Jays sent David Segui to Texas. Swing and a miss. Tavares strikes him out. Now there are two out. Jose Vidro, the batter. Well, we showed you the hot zone, where to go with it. Exactly what Tavares does. Where he picked that spin up right out of the ball. But good pitch by Tavares and the strikeout. Left Stevenson shaking his head. That front shoulder really pulled off of the ball. He's trying to hit that ball right to you. Tavares now going after Vidro, who homered his last time up. Back to back homers for the Expos in the fifth. Widger followed Vidro's home run, one of his own. Widger and Helton have each hit two home runs in this game. Helton's home runs have both been two-run homers. Widger's home runs have both been solo home runs. See the Rockies take on the San Francisco Giants May 12th through the 14th. Tickets available. Stop by one of your Rockies dugout stores, King Supers, or just give the Rockies a call at 1 800 388 Rock. Bonds is off to a good start for San Francisco. He has 10 home runs. Tied with Galarraga and Sheffield for the league lead. Elton's got it. He'll underhand it to Perez, and that forces Guerrero, and that'll do it. Expo strand two. Two shutout innings of relief for the bullpen. Jumper Walker and Cirillo are coming up. Baseball on Fox Sports Net is brought to you by your Denver Front Range Jeep Dealers. By AutoZone, the best parts and auto parts. And by Geico Direct, the sensible alternative. With George Frazier, I'm Dave Armstrong. Beautiful view of Coors Field in downtown Denver. And a gorgeous night for baseball. Great night for the hitters. The hitters so far in this game with 15 runs.
strikeouts and 23 hits. The Rockies are set to go again in the sixth inning. Terry Shumpert will lead off, followed by Walker and then Cirillo. Shumpert, an RBI tonight. He now has 13 ribbies in a part-time role. Shumpert 0 for 2 with that sacrifice pop fly to the shortstop. <laughs> I love saying that. Matt Blank still out there for the Expos. interesting to watch a little bit of the chess match going on between Shumpert and Barrett at third base. He's come in with the bag, go back, and as Shumpert saw him make his stride to go back to the behind the bag and play deep behind the bag, that's when he thought about laying a butt down. Well, he laid it down anyway, and he'll have it. Even if Barrett picks that ball up, Shumpert would beat it out. A bunt single to start things in the sixth inning. And now Shumpert joins the hit parade. Well, Shump even showed bunt previously, but now you catch Barrett way back behind the bag. He's got no chance at all. Got a hustle by Shepard. Build the lead. You're up one in the middle of this lineup. Turn him loose. Walker with some hits tonight. Double down the left field line. Single to center and walk. Pretty good during that eight-game hitting streak, wouldn't you say? Bouncer foul. Almost 500. Well, you'll notice the other thing with Larry, too. The first time he faces a pitcher, and that's what's happened this first time, he's probably seen blank. But I can in no other situation. And he'll swing at that first pitch. I'm sure he questioned Goodwin, too. Goodwin saw a lot of pitches from blank. Let's see what he had. Well, not a play. And it's two strikes now on Walker. Walker's average up to 374. Guerrero also has two hits tonight. He came in the league leader. Ellis Burks, former Rocky center fielder, hitting 394 going into play tonight. That's a keep you on a fastball there. Walk got a couple of sliders and then Blank showing a lot of hard here going hard in on Walker to keep him back off the inside half of that plate maybe allow him to go outside with a slider and he does and Walker deposits into the bullpen Walker joins the home run derby White gives up the home run to Walker number three for Walk and the Rockies lead by three Just thinking along in the pitcher's mind together. Hard fastball in. Well, he's got to bring me a curveball. One thing I noticed with Blank after we take a look at where Walker's home run went. As a hitter, you try to look for something. All right, let's stop it right here. You can see back up with his hand how he hooked the ball. As a hitter, you see the hook or the L shape with your hand. Indication of breaking balls coming. Walker read that and then hit the ball out of the ballpark. Now blank with ball one to Cirillo. Two home runs from Helton. Now Walker with a home run. Hammonds is homer. And it's 10 to 7, and we're in the sixth. I told you it wasn't going to end 7 to 5. Yes, you did, and it did not. Yes, and we are at the bottom of the sixth inning, and yes, there has been 17 runs and 25 hits in the ballgame. I'll have to admit, it's not one of the greatest predictions of all time. But it wasn't a hard one either. <laughs> Two and one here to Cirillo, who has singled and doubled, scored twice, and driven one home. sixth inning.
And Dallas Williams who had pulled first. Amazing. How about this stat for Todd Helton? And just something to throw out there. For the year, Helton hitting 384 with two strikes. 15 for 39. Both home runs tonight. Todd Helton had two strikes on him. One to right, one to left. How about one to center, Todd? One and one, the count. Down low, two and one to Helton. Nine times Helton has homered twice in one game in his career, four times against the Expos. to nothing. Yeah, Helton's seeing the ball great tonight. Well, he's seeing the ball great all year. Another hit for Helton, his third hit of the night. First one that didn't leave the park. Well, when you're locked in, the concentration comes with it. And the reason you're locked in is you're just seeing a baseball. So look how big his eyes got right before the ball got there. His eyes widen up. They turn on that ball from blank and hit it out to right field for a base hit. That'll do it for blank. Felipe Alou is going to make a double switch. We'll sort it out for you when we come back in a moment. Run of the year. He has three hits tonight. What do you know, his favorite number is three. Threes are wild for Walker tonight and for the Rockies, who lead by three. Each team with 13 hits. And on a double switch, the Expos bring in a new second baseman, Jeff Blum, to take over for Pedro. He'll hit in the number nine spot. And the new pitcher is Anthony Telford. Well, Telford comes into the ball game. This will be his 12th appearance. Already you can see that he's figured into a lot of decisions out of the bullpen. Three and two record. Eight strikeouts and three walks. One out. I'm sure what he's going to try to do with Hammonds is get the ball down in the strike zone and hopefully get a ground ball. Telford and Hammonds have mixed it up before, and who do you think won that battle? Well, Hammonds is three for six lifetime with a 500 average against Telford. Hammonds with a home run tonight and a single. Telford. Coming back to Coors Field for the seventh time with an ERA of over 10. I doubt he is brimming with confidence right now. Strike one to Hammonds. Elton on at first. Two runs in on the home run by Walker here in the sixth. strikes on Hammonds. If you have a baseball question that needs answering, send it to us at pregame report foxsports.net. Select the questions used for the Merrill Lynch email trivia question airing in the Rockies pregame report. Like the question today, what is a can of corn? It's a lazy fly ball, easy fly ball to the outfielder. And the reason for that, in the old days, in the old general stores, and groceries are up on the top shelf, the corn. The guy would flick it down, reach up and flick it down with a big stick and catch it, catch the can of corn. That's why they call it that. Side, three balls, two strikes. Well, let's see if Helton is running on the short side of a double play. Widger wants fastball. Helton is going, and he got a great job, and it's hammered to left. 
for a hit. Helton will take third. Hammonds with his third hit of the night. A trio of Rockies now, each with three hits. Messrs. Walker, Helton, and Hammonds. And all three have left the yard. Hey, Lou, can't believe what he's seeing. He had to clean the glasses. Yeah, he's thinking, come on, guys, I know this is Denver, but the guy that... Sorry, he's had some pretty good... He had to have a pretty good feeling, though, and he tied the ball game up and then went up on top seven five. He said, well, my bullpen can hold him, obviously. Then I can hand the ball over to Urbina, but it doesn't look like they may get that opportunity. And when you consider that the Rockies attack the ace of the Expo staff, Justin Hermanson tonight. Tomorrow, the Rockies face Jeremy Powell, their number five starter, who is being recalled from AAA. And then on Wednesday afternoon, Hideki Oravu, who is one and two of the 5.60 earned run average. Perhaps the most booed move in baseball. that it worked for you one time once how many times did you try it fake it dozens 50 well, I think Lou knows what it's like in Denver he managed here in 1981 American Association for his second day year 16 games above 500 Just making the start for the Giants tonight. That one in the fourth inning. Perez hits it into the gap in right center field. Guerrero goes over and he drops the ball. Helton scores. Hammonds takes second. Guerrero just flat out dropped it. the end of the glove it looked like he closed it too soon thinking about trying to throw the ball home to show off that arm he has and that'll be an error on Guerrero in right field that allows in the 11th run of the ball game it's now 11 to 7 Rockies and you're in the bottom of the sixth inning and 18 runs 27 hits and an error in the ball game the run would have scored anyway on a sack fly but now the Rockies still up with just one out so credit Perez with a sack fly and no time at bat plus he gets an RBI he's safe at first on the error by the right fielder Guerrero and Hammonds takes second on the error so you still give Perez credit for no time at bat on the sack fly and an RBI now Maine with a base hit Hammonds got a good jump here he comes and Guerrero but Donnelly was sending Hammonds all the way anyway. Going to test the arm, and after he bobbles it, the only thing left for... Throw the ball in. I watched the 
exchange it's easily into the glove and he goes to grab a hold of the baseball that flies out of his hand and by then forget about it Emmons came across with the 12th run of the ball game no error there I mean it didn't do anything the Perez didn't advance from second to third and Maine at first and Maine with an RBI his third of the year his first RBI that didn't involve a sack fly and now Julian Tavares will hit for himself only the 16th career at bat. He will try to bunt Perez and Maine over. Strike one. So Maine joins the hit parade. He and Shumpert each with a hit in this inning. Every Rocky starter, not including the pitcher, has a hit in this game. And three Rockies have three hits each. You start putting the bump plays on, try to cover up. And as a pitcher now at the plate, bunting the baseball, what you want to do is bunt it hard enough up the third base line that you allow Barrett to get it. That will leave open third base in the advancement of Nafi Perez. He gets it down. They're going to look at third, but now go to first. Tavares did it on a pitch up around the letters. Perez to third, Maine to second. Defensively, anytime you have a chance, or if there's any doubt at all, if you think, now watch how Barrow shoot back to the bag. This ball's bunted pretty hard, and actually, I think Telford thought about going to third base. But Dave, anytime you've got a chance to get it out, and there's any doubt in your mind about going to third base, you get the out at first. And that'll bring up Goodwin. hit around for the second straight inning. The Rockies sent eight men to the plate in the third. hits tonight hitting coach loves to see hitting 15 uh, hits you've seen a pitcher write down the charts and how they keep pitches well, Clint does the same thing for the sequence of at bats and what the pitch was and locations and where you hit how they pitched you and make a mental note of that then he can go back and say into the fifth inning or into the sixth inning and say okay and this at bat against Telford on a 2-1 count he threw you a slider he threw you a fastball Try to lock that in your memory bank. Goodwin has put a charge into this one. Deep right center off the wall. Goodwin racing around the bases. He'll put on the brakes at second. A two-run double for Goodwin. And that one about five feet shy of a home run. Another look at the ball off of the bat of Goodwin, a fastball. Again, David, it's pretty simple. It's right up in the middle of the strike zone, set on a tee to see how far you can hit it. And he hits it a long way, 400 feet out in right center field. Actually, Bergeron played that very well off of the wall and got it back in in a hurry. A good one would have been at third base. Now, Shumpert in the hole. Picked off by Barrett. He'll throw out Terry Shumpert, and that'll do it. But the Rockies sent 10 men to the plate. Six of them score. Goodwin caps it with the two-run double. Welcome back to Coors Field, where the Rocky hitters and the Expo hitters, too. Look at that. 29 combined hits, 21 runs. The error by Guerrero resulted in a couple of more runs for the Rockies, who now lead by seven. Tavares staying in there. Tavares getting out of a mini jam in the Expo's sixth inning, stranding two base runners. He'll go after Widger, Barrett, and Blum here in the seventh. Widger tonight, he's had a good night. 
two solo home runs. Strike one from Tavares. If you just try to work ahead in the count now, your ball club with the seven run lead. I mean, I know you say, as soon as I say throw it right down the middle, somebody hit a home run. You know, work and throw strikes. You don't want to hurt yourself by walking guys, falling behind in the count, and just give them any indication at all to let them back into a ball game. I told you it wasn't going to end seven to five. <laughs> How many times are you going to tell? No. Swing and a miss, and down goes Widger. One out here in the seventh inning. Stay tuned for Rockies Weekly. Thursdays at 8. This week, a timely theme. It'll be about offense with Clint Hurdle talking about improved batters. Player profile will be Mike Lansing and, of course, Buddy Bell, as always. Rockies Weekly, this Thursday at 8, right here on Fox Sports Net. Michael Barrett, the batter. Ball one. dropping here in Coorsville, but still very comfortable. Temperatures now, I would say, down in the low 50s. Inside 2 and 0. about this Dave earlier the fact that how many teams have played home games on the year versus the Rockies the Rockies had only played so far on the year 10 home games in comparison to the Expos with 15 Atlanta with 15 and the New York Mets with 16 and the record would have been a little bit better plus the fact of who they had to go against on the road with Arizona Atlanta Florida played very well in the beginning Meanwhile, the Diamondbacks haven't played a team yet above 500. Yeah, they've had a pretty easy, obviously their schedule has favored the Diamondbacks greatly. It all evens out, though, over 162 games. Well, they got that one big guy that doesn't even know. The guy that's 6-0 in the month of April. Randy Johnson. Mr. Randy. Stretch time. The Rockies leading 14-7. Now we'll look at what's ahead on the National Sports Report after the game. Let's go to the Fox Network Center. Well, there we are on Fox Sports Net. Welcome back to Coors Field. You're, 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 here we go. Hot <laughs> dog got you, didn't it? No. I was raring to go. Look at that. 14 runs, 16 hits for the Rockies. New catcher for the Expos, Webster. He replaces Mr. Widger behind the plate. Now well, Webster's been around for a while. Caught last year, most recently, with the Baltimore Orioles. Free agent signed here with the Expos. Another veteran, Charlie O'Brien, who is still down in Florida, rehabilitating his foot. So they had two veteran and on this ball club that we're going to back up Widger. Widger off to a great start offensively, hitting over 300 with six homers. Here's Walker. Swings at Telford's fastball. Strike one. Walker, three hits tonight, including a two-run homer. He has 15 ribbies now on the year and three home runs. He has scored three times. He is three for three with a walk. Blum. The bat 
almost made it that far as well. One out in the Rockies seven. Well, Benz, here's your opportunity to participate in the new Colorado Rockies home run 5K run walk through the Lodo area that include a lap around the warning track. Fans of all ages and running ability are welcome to come out and support the Colorado Rockies. Great food, prizes, and a free Rockies tickets await you. May the 21st. Join the Rockies and everyone else for a great day at Coors Field. Call today to sign up at 303-312-2411. What date is that? May 21st. May 21st. We'll be in Philadelphia. <clears throat> you were going to run it. I was going to walk in it. I was going to watch it. <laughs> I couldn't run, but I'd walk. Here's Cirillo. Another bouncing ball to Blum. on for size 17 for 39 that figures to a 436 average overall hitting 355 eight home runs 29 runs batted in can I hear a wow from the congregation wow wait a minute one more time thank you Arithmetic for you at home tonight. The Rockies hitters three, four, five, and six. What do you think they are tonight? There's one of the home runs from Helton. Oh, I'll give you one more to the other opposite field. Hitters three through six in the lineup tonight. Eleven for fifteen with four home runs, ten runs scored. Here to help We're in the seventh, 14 7 Rockies. Broken bat, and it still goes. A three homer night for Helton. That's one way to get on the highlight show. a good bet on the pregame show tomorrow, folks. You might see him in a conversation for a while. So Helton with a three-homer night. Mm. Helton is about turned out the lights here at Coors Field. It's 15 to 7. his bat. Still a lot of strength. This ball out of the ballpark. For Helton, his first three homer game. It's been done six times in Rockies history. Walker has done it twice. Once in Montreal, once in St. Louis. So Helton now nine home runs on the year, and he's amongst the leaders. Also leading in RBIs. And his average will be in the top 10 as well. Two balls, two strikes. Hammonds trying to keep pace. Hammonds with three hits tonight, two singles and a home run. talking about the Rockies that only hit 17 home runs as a team and everybody was concerned about the lack of home runs. Five home runs tonight. The Rockies now have 28 home runs on the year.
Castillo was the last Rocky to hit three homers in a game. He did it last year against Milwaukee here. Swing and a miss, and down goes Jeffrey Hammond. Down go the Rockies in the seventh, but not before Helton had some more heroics. What a night for Todd Helton. The home run in the third. The home run in the fifth. And now in the seventh, yet another home run. B. Todd Helton, huh? Three home runs, five runs batted in. The Rockies, 15 to 7 now, their lead. And lost in all of this, the bullpen, which has come on first Gabe White and now Julian Tavares to shut down the Expos. Three innings, just one hit. They haven't allowed a run. Orlando Cabrera, one for four tonight. Auto Express, your exceptional value. Top brands. Visit www.wards.com for the location nearest you. Boy, he put on a show his first three at bats. A double over the head of Hammonds. Then the infield double, if you will. It was a deflection off the glove of Jarvis, the pitcher, that got by Shumpert. He took second. And then a three run homer in the fourth. That tied the game at five. The Expos then took the lead seven to five on back to back home runs by Pedro and Witcher. That chased Jarvis from the game. Since then, the bullpen for the Rockies has shut down the Expos. And Todd Helton and the rest have just continued to hit and hit and hit. The Rockies with a five-run third and a six-run sixth. The Rockies have hit around twice in this game, sent eight men to the plate in another inning. Slapped on the ground, Perez. Two gone in the eighth. What's on tap for us? We'll be back on the air tomorrow right here on Fox Sports Net. What's on tap brought to you by Michelob Light. The pre-game show starts at 6.30 Mountain Time tomorrow. No TV of the day game on Wednesday. Back on the air. Every game on the next road trip will be on TV. Either on Denver's WB2 or right here on Fox Sports Net. Fastball upstairs to Rondell White. In only one half inning has the side been retired in order. That was in the seventh for the Expos. Rondell White charges this one out into right center and gone into the bullpen. A home run from White, his second of the year. Tonight, <clears throat> tonight you hope the fortunes don't go with the Expos, but in ball games that they have hit home runs in, they were nine and three coming into the night's game. Rondell White, his second homer of the year. Remember I said solo home runs don't beat you? All the home runs for the Expos tonight have been solo home runs. They're throwing strikes, getting ahead of it, hit it out, they hit it out. And you got a lead right now, Dave, of 15 to 7, an eight-run lead. 
you see this happen. You walk a bunch of people, then give up the bomb. Vladimir Guerrero. Up and into Guerrero, who has two hits tonight. He's leading 15 to 8. Dejan worked an inning in two thirds the other night in his ball game. His first appearance of the year 2000 gave him three hits and a run. His earned run average now at 540. Mike has to gain his confidence back after last year in this ballpark. Overall, last year, Dejan went to spring training with, to show something. Spring training pitched the ball fairly well at camp. Like maybe he needed an opportunity there. One hopper to Schumper. to go for the Rockies to snap the losing streak. Coming up right after the game, it's the National Sports Report. Bring you up to date on Avalanche Red Wings. Show you the highlights from the 3-1 win by the Red Wings over the Avalanche tonight. Plus highlights of the Braves and Dodgers and all the coverage from the NBA. All that right after the game on the National Sports Report here on Fox Sports Net. Here's Wilton Guerrero at ball one. Well, after the night of 23 runs, 32 hits, and an error in the ball game, you'd like to finish it out with about six pitches. Dave John's working on that. And too quickly gone here in the ninth. will bat for the first time in the ball game. He came in for Chris Widger an inning ago. Well, the Rockies are going to go to 12 and 14 on the year. They'll pick up a half game on Idle, Arizona, and go to 7 and 4 at home. Tomorrow our broadcast begins once again at 6:30. Scott Carl, Jeremy Powell, the opposing pitchers. Team. Montreal came in here winning 8 of 11, including a two game sweep of the Rockies last week in Montreal. The 3 1 pitch. That's a fair ball. Webster will have extra bases as he rifles a double into the corner. A 3 1 count. Webster doesn't get very many at bats with Widger around because of the job that Chris Widger has done as a catcher for the Expos. But Lenny comes up with a big base hit here. And for Webster. Now Michael Barrett. Barrett one for three. First hit in the year 2000 for Webster. He's now one for nine. Catcher spot. Two home runs and a double tonight for the Expos. Bouncing ball, Shumpert. This will be the ball game. Rockies win. Rockies win. 
15 to 8 the final. Todd Helton, what a night he had. Three home runs, five runs batted in, and Helton is our Coors player of the game. No, really? Really. <laughs> Four for five, three home runs, five RBIs for Todd Helton. It was a night for the Rockies totally. They swung about well tonight. And the bullpen came in to shut the door, too, when it counted. Walker, he also homered tonight, and the Rockies coast to a 15-8 win over the Expos. Join us tomorrow on Fox Sports Net as the Rockies continue their series with Montreal. It all starts with a pregame show at 6.30. Until then, for George Frazier, Dave Armstrong saying so long from Coors Field. You've been watching Rockies baseball on Fox Sports Net. Up next, it's the National Sports Report.